today on Ask This Old House. I'll give you some tips on how to paint a baby's nursery the right way. For this room, I select a zero VOC paint. You can breathe easy and it's also very good for a nursery room. Did you know that electric dryers use thousands of watts of electricity to dry your clothes? I'm going to show you some new technologies that could cut that in half. And this stand will hold a turntable and some records, and we'll show you how to build it. We're going to use the floating tenants to hold all the sides together, and then we should be fine without any mechanical fasteners. Come on in, Moro. Welcome to my house. Thank you. It's a great house. Yeah, it is a really great house. Uh, currently, we're in like a one-bedroom apartment, so we're really cramped in right. there. So this is going to be great. It's a four-bedroom here. Yep. And this is one of the rooms that I want uh, to be painted and set up for my son. This is going to be his nursery. Got it. We're not moved in yet, so we think this is a good time because Evan's going to be a year old, and I'm just really excited because we want to paint this room for him, get it ready for him. Oh, that's nice. It's a great house. and. Uh, for the nursery room, the colored light gray works out very nice. A lot of people liked it, mm -hmm. but you want to change the colors? What would you think about? I do. I, I have some inspiration from just getting this room to be more of like an ocean theme. Yeah. Uh, you see, my husband, he loves to fish, and oh, that's nice. you know, we got married in Hawaii, and I think we just want to paint it maybe like an aquamarine just to make it a little more like an ocean theme in here. I like that. That's going to look nice. One thing I love it when I came into this room is just two pieces of furniture. That's very easy for us. We're gonna move those two pieces. Okay. And we can start the work. All right, but I know this house was built before 1978. One thing that I always do on this situation is test for lead paint, usually on windows and trim and walls. Well, this is a vinyl replacement window and this is some stain work with polyurethane. There's no lead on those materials. Okay. But it could be some lead paint on the walls. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to go for and test for it, okay? Uh, I have this kit here specific for lead paint. You can get these kits at any home center or hardware stores, and they're really easy to use. There's two chemicals inside. They are in separate vials. Once I crash the part A and part B, shake them up. If those chemicals contact lead, it will become red or pink. I'm gonna rub on this piece of sample that I made because I know there is no lead in it. Let's try a little here. See that color there? That's yellow. That means it didn't detect any lead paint on this board. But I wanna make sure we're doing this correctly. We wanna rub some on this card that comes with the kit. And it has traces of lead. This should turn pink. That means we've done it right but I want to see and try on the walls now. Okay. So, and I want to look for a nice spot to do it because I want to go down to the very first coat of paint on it. It's right behind this outlet. Almost there. That's a great idea. Well, I do not want to put any damage on the walls, Ava. This is a good spot for us here. Great. All right, now we got by utilic knife and we go right there scratch a little bit of the paint in here because I want to go down to the very first layer of paint on the walls that looks good all right we're going to do exactly what we did there we're going to part a and part b but we're going to new, we're going to use a new swab all right okay. we're going to crunch part a part b shake it now we're going to the wall See that turns yellow? I mean, the test didn't detect any lead on the walls, but can you get the card so we can double check, please? Sure. Okay, let's double check on the card because we know that it has traces of lead paint on it. Right. Wow, that comes out fast. See how the pink is starting to show? Mm -hmm. That means we did the test correctly. There's no lead on the walls, and we're ready to paint this room. That sounds let's great. do it? Yes, let's do it. Cool.
Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. I went to the paint store, picked up a pint sample of a can of paint. We chose this color using a color swatch on a blanket that stays in that room. But it's very hard to determine the color from that swatch. Well, it's good to have a big sample put on the walls because you can see how it's going to work with the lighting in this room. Um, what do you think about? Yeah, I think it looks great. All right, I'm happy to hear that because I already bought a whole gallon of it. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Okay, Ava, first thing, we're going to tape all the woodwork because we are not painting the woodwork in this room. The only thing that we're not going to tape is the ceiling. So why aren't we taping the ceiling? Uh, because it has this texture finish on really hard to put a tape and get a straight cutting line right there. For this room, I select a zero VOC paint. Okay, what is VOCs? VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compound. It's chemical that is in the paint and releases on the air as the paint dries. It can cause respiratory problems, it can irritate your eyes. You always notice that this paint has no odor as you work with it. You can breathe easy and it's also very good for a nursery room. We started by cutting all the way around the woodwork and the outlets and I'm using a two and a half inch angle brush. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to cut between the ceiling and the walls, all right? This is you're gonna have, uh, because you have no blue tape or any yellow tape there, I'll show the easiest way to do it. Not a lot of paint on the brush, just a little bit. Oh, okay. Just enough. Okay. So you can come right this way, angle the brush uh -huh. about this much. Just go very easy. There we go. Pull it down, yeah, just go back. Nice and easy. Look at that, that's a clean straight line. You wanna keep going with the ceiling lines? Okay. Now start to roll. Yep. So you're gonna go up. Light, okay, now it comes all the way down to the bottom. Oh, and wow, yep, all the way down, one long stroke, yep. Now go to your side, go to your right a little bit, yep. Yep. Ava, first coat is dry, so let's apply the second and final coat, okay? And I'm gonna help you cut in this time, and then we're gonna roll, all right? All right. Oh, Ava, I love this room. What do you think about it? I think it looks amazing. It's exactly what I was looking for. All right. Thank you all so right. much, Mauro. Thank you very much. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Oh good, Richard, a dryer. So I like the jeans on well, Delicate. Take your shirt off, I'll throw it in here. He's got a hanger. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with the dryer? I thought we'd take a minute to talk about electric dryers. People know about them. They use a lot of electricity. You know, many times it's the biggest energy user in the house for electricity. When it's running, it is spiking. And the idea is you, you have an oversized toaster element and you run, heat, you heat up the air enough to evaporate the moisture that's in the clothes and then you vent it to outside and that element just stays on, stays on. You can use thousands and thousands of watts. So this is an electric 
heat pump dryer. <laughs> you, you love your heat pumps. Well, you, you put them everywhere. Well, you know, it's the story has always been that we need to learn to move heat, not try to make heat like an electric dryer. Yep. So if you think about any heat pump, it has two components, and that's the same for an air conditioner. It just depends on which way it's going. It has a really cold coil. Mm -hmm. Now, on an air conditioning mode, that really cold coil, warm air that's inside the building blows across the cold coil. Heat has no choice but to go into the cold and be absorbed into the refrigerant. Yep. And the byproduct of that is always condensation. You know the water that drips out of every air conditioner. Yep. Okay, and now it goes here. And outside, there is a really hot coil to dump the heat to outside that's been absorbed. All this thing does is takes these two pieces and brings them together in a heat exchanger down at the bottom of this thing. So I, I get the heat part, right? You, you make a hot element, you put it next to the clothes, right. and that helps dry them. That's right. How are you using the cold air conditioning part in this thing? When this dryer is on, warm, dry air is fed into the cylinder where the wet clothes are. The moisture in the clothes is absorbed into the air, and that air passes over an evaporative coil, which is filled with cold refrigerant. The heat from the clothes is absorbed into the refrigerant, and the moisture from the clothes condenses on that cold coil and is pumped to a drain. The slightly warmer refrigerant is then run through a compressor, which makes it very hot. The air is then fed across another coil where the hot refrigerant is now, and that's what makes the heat that is used to dry the clothes, and the cycle repeats. And so you're really keeping all contained inside this unit. No outdoor unit, all right here. Absolutely. So in a, in a conventional electric dryer, when you say you have to dump that to the outside, that, that's what we're doing with that four inch. Four inch vent to outside, and all that heat and moisture goes to outside. What, how do we this dump? Does, this doesn't have a vent. It all stays self-contained. And so the heat stays inside this unit and just moves around to make sure it works to its advantage. Now you're still going to have water, mm. right? so there's either a drain pipe right here that can go into the drain, but if you didn't have a drain, you actually could catch the water here for up to two cycles and just dump it out. So it means this thing can go just about anywhere. Wow, that's cool. And there's a cool. story in operating costs. This thing's going to use between 40 to 50% less than electric conventional Wow. Dryer. Yeah, it's a and real story. Will the cycle take longer? It can. It can take because it's just going to move that heat around, but it's, it's, it's not a noticeably long, yeah. longer period. Okay. Little care and feeding items here. So everybody knows on a dryer that you got to make sure that you clean the lint filter. And that's, that's the same for an electric, for a gas, or for a heat pump. Not and everybody. Never do my my 14-year-old does not know that's that. That's right. Well, they, they will learn. I'll remind them. Right. <laughs> but since this thing is so dependent on airflow across the heat exchanger, this has one more piece down here. And that is at the very bottom. you got to take this out with some regularity. And you can see right here the, the inside of the heat exchanger. you got to make sure that stays clean using a soft brush vacuum, you know, because if you have pet dander or uh, anything, lint or anything in there, it's going to clog it and make it not work. And new technology like this, we, how do we get our hands on it? It's just arriving right now, so it's an exciting time to sort of, if we can cut the electrical consumption in half on uh, yeah. dry and clothes, that's a yeah. big deal. Cool. Good information. All right. Tommy, look at you. I thought we were going to do a build-it. You look like you're about to DJ a party. <laughs> we are going to do a build-it. We're going to do a build-it to hold this turntable right here, play some of the records that I used to listen to when I was a kid. Boy, you do love your Elvis, don't you? Yeah, it was cool. Listen to vinyl records. You just sat around and played the tunes. Yeah. It was uh, something to do. And let's face it, it's kind of coming back, right? You can buy turntables yeah. now. You can go and get the old vintage records. People like listening to and them. And there are companies that are starting to make them again. All right, so, so fun. I'm on board. What yeah. are you thinking? All right, so take a look right here. I want to make a simple box. Mm -hmm. and it's going to have tapered legs underneath it. And I'm going to make that box just enough to hold the turntable on top and the records underneath to stand them gotcha. up. Gotcha. And it's okay. sort of a modern look you got going on there. Mid-century modern. I actually copied it from a design. I looked at some books and stuff like that from old cabinets. And the material you're thinking? It's going to be three-quarter inch oak. And this is a red oak veneer. And I bought it at the home center. Nice. I bought a sheet of three-quarter. It's much more than we need, but you can always use it. And we'll use quarter-inch birch because they didn't have this in oak. Nice. But you're not going to really see it. I'll stain right. it up. And then some solid stock as well. Right, this is one by four red oak, and I also got some one by three red oak. Nice thing about this is you can buy just what you need. And basically that is uh, for the face frame. Uh, we gotta cover the edge of the uh, plywood. Cover the edge of the plywood, but I wanna simulate like a draw front that will be underneath the table. All right, let's do it.
All right, to get started, we're gonna rip this piece down for the depth of our cabinet, and it's gonna be 15 and 3 8. This one piece will end up being our two sides, bottom and top. Rather than cutting the pieces and dealing with the plywood edges individually, it's easier to cut them as one. We're gonna attach the solid red oak to the plywood with floating tenons. So we have to mark both of the pieces so the mortises that will hold the tenons will line up. We'll just put some wood glue into the mortises and along the edge of the plywood, then set the floating tenants into the hole. That's pretty good. Let's give it a few minutes for this to dry, and then we can rip it down. You may have noticed that the mortises were set off center on the edges and on the oak. The reason is, is because I want to chamfer the edge to give it a little more detail. Then we'll use a rabbiting bit to recess the back panel. Now I can set my track saw to 45 degrees and cut one side of each panel. After cutting one side, we turn the pieces around and I cut the opposing miter at 45 degrees. And that'll give me my length. Okay, you good, you even? Yeah, I'm even. We're going to use the floating tenons to hold all the sides together, but this time we'll have to cut the mortises on our miter cut. So we'll set the machine shoe at 45 degrees. It's a lot easier to sand the inside of the box before we put it together. Now we can install our tenants and glue up our cabinet. All right, we'll get this last clamp on here, get this all tightened up. Wait about a half an hour, 45 minutes for this glue to set up. And then we should be fine without any mechanical fasteners. All right, so this is the piece of one by four that will go up under the top to support it and give it a different dimension. and we'll attach that piece with the same floating tenant system. All 
All right, now we're gonna cut the little molding detail to frame that upper section. I'm gonna cope cut each end of that molding. Now a cope cut will simulate a miter, but it will actually sit on the face of the other molding. Now we'll give everything a good sanding, starting with 100 grit and moving up to 220. All right, so everything's been sanded, wiped it all down with a tack rag, and now I wanna put a preconditioner on it so when the stain goes on the oak, it will go on evenly. All right, the conditioner has set up, we've wiped it off, and now we're gonna stain it, and we're gonna use a thick gel stain and just brush it on and wipe it off. Oh yeah, it is thick. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna wipe some of this off, Tommy. Yep, start at the front, work your way back. Look at that. Nice, huh? Huh? Try to keep it nice and even. This is a high gloss polyurethane. We'll put on about four coats. We wanna make sure it's thoroughly dry before we apply in our next coat. All right, because the leg is gonna sit at an angle off one side, we wanna keep the bracket in about two inches from the side and one inch from the front because it's not gonna tip forward. And pre-made legs. Right, these are tapered round legs, pretty common with the mid-century modern design. So I got 12 inches because I want the cabinet to be at a certain height and the 12 inches will work. Flip it over, we can adjust the leg. Okay, Tommy, your choice, GI Blues or Blue Hawaii? Oh, Blue Hawaii. Blue Ho wow, Blue Hawaii, old school, huh? Oh yeah. Wait a minute, not, no, 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 whoa, not whoa, more whoa. Elvis. Hey, no, hey, no, Tommy, hey. you and your Elvis. Hey. How about Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Before <laughs> Young. That's too hippie stuff. <laughs> we don't need hippie. hippie. Stuff. Don't knock the hippie stuff. What about a little Grateful Dead? Are you a deadhead? Um, not really. I just went to 35 shows and Jerry's funeral, but I'm not a deadhead. <laughs> but. Oh, my God. So you're a deadhead. This is the best right here. <sighs> Tommy, a very nice build. Well done. Thanks for the help. All right, guys. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Jen Nawada. I'm Richard Thuy. And I'm Tom Silver. For Ask This Old House. Turn it up. Let's yeah. fire this thing up. Can we just up. put this one on? No, no. Blue Hawaii is all the way. Crosby, Stills, listen. Nash, Young, Blue Abrams, Blue Silver, Blue Cook. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.